The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. I uh, got a little bit of a cough, a little bit stuffed up, but bear with me this morning, folks. We'll probably get through the hour. Uh, and right now, we got markets picking up basically where we left off yesterday. Jumping over to the S&Ps right now, you're negative by 38 points. We're trading at 44.81. We'll put things on a 15-minute chart right now. Yesterday, early action, we were up at 45.80. You're about 100 points below that price level. Level. Uh, some strong Fed speak yesterday, and we saw we're going to jump right to the 10 year, man, because you talk about a move. You're talking about from early on Tuesday, we had a 122 handle. I guess it was 11 o'clock at night on Monday to be exact, but the run really began on the open at 9.15 a.m. yesterday. But nonetheless, you back it up to basically Monday evening. We had a 122 handle on the 10 year. You trade down two full points to where we were this morning, 120.05. That has pushed the yield on the 10-year to 2.63%. Man, talk about blowing right through 2%. Talk about blowing right through 2.5%. We're trading right now down 16 ticks uh, at 120.13. The 30-year down a full point and 13 ticks to 145 on the dot this morning. We jump over to the volatility index. The VIX back above 20. 22.98 uh, is the next run. Back up to the 30s again. Quite a rise off of uh, a low that we saw of 18.55 yesterday. We're trading near 23 right now in the VIX. We jump over to commodities. Gold, just been chopping around. Right now you're positive by a dollar to 19.29. Crude, 102.85, positive by about a dollar as well. Silver's negative by 13 cents right now. And we jump back to the indices. NASDAQ 100. Now, man, here's what I'll say. Uh, the move, pretty spectacular yesterday, pretty spectacular today as well. But look where we just came from, folks. You get the NASDAQ 100 trading at 14,600. We had a 12,900 handle as recently as March 15th. It's only April 6th. Okay, so the market is still up. What's that? 11, 12 percent since March 15th. Keep that in context, man, as you think about the pullback that is potential here, uh, that is possible, you could say. Now, taking a look at the Fibonacci, the bounce we got right to the 618, folks. Okay, boy, if that's a reversal and we ever get another A to B, C to D leg, you're talking about, well, ballpark 16.5 down to 13. You're talking about a 3,500. Okay, A to B leg in the NASDAQ 100. Now we make it up to 15,200. For simple math, we're gonna go from 15,000. You ever get that acceleration, folks, that brings it down to 11,500. Be about 11,700 on the dot. You're talking about 3,000 points from where we're at right now, and that's about 20% from where we're at right now. I bring up the 20% mark um, because even City was out there today saying recession possibly coming in 2023. Stocks could decline 20% or more. I think it was 20%, I'll get the quote uh, to be exact, but nonetheless, uh, big numbers, big bounce. We'll see where we go from here. We got Fed minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Let's jump over to the headlines. Fed minutes to reveal long awaited details of the balance sheet plan. Well, we got a, a little bit of a glimpse yesterday. Um, balance sheet reduction, it's coming. It's coming and it's coming potentially uh, in May. Federal Reserve is going to unveil details of its likely plan to shrink its massive balance sheet with the release of minutes of the U.S. Central Bank's March meeting, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Today that comes out. Uh, Jerome Powell promised a more detailed discussion of the $8.9 trillion with a T balance sheet, laying out pretty much the parameters of what we're looking at. All right. We got uh, a heads up of it yesterday, folks. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Governor Leo Brannard said Tuesday that the process could start as soon as May and go considerably faster than 2017 when they rose over the course of a year to a maximum <clears throat> maximum monthly roll off of $50 billion. I mean, you look at that ramp up, man. It's pretty remarkable to see what's gonna happen in this market as that deceleration of their balance sheet uh, goes from about 9 trillion and we'll see where we can go from there. But quite 
the minutes that we will get at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Uh, economists say the cap on runoff could total roughly $100 billion monthly, allowing around $1 trillion in reductions per year. J.P. Morgan, um, Michael Faroli estimates caps at $60 billion for Treasuries and $30 billion for mortgage-backed securities. So keep these numbers in mind as we get the minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Evercore is looking at $50 billion for Treasuries and $30 billion for mortgage-backed securities. You got Deutsche Bank out there, $60 billion and $45 billion. So they're on the high end of $105. Uh, but we're going to get it at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. We'll see if the market moves. I mean, this might be one of the cases here of... The rally to negative prices happening before we get the news because uh, it's been quite a pullback last couple of days. You just look at the 10 year, man. It is factored in, folks. I mean, that is quite a move. We got the 10 year yield at 2.63% right now. Uh, the market, well aware that higher rates are coming at us in a big way. And uh, we'll see if it's priced in when we get those Fed minutes. But boy, it's a little bit dicey right now, folks, in this market, especially when you think about where we were, where we are. For this acceleration, things seem pretty dire when you trade down 100 S&P points over two days. You got the 10 year jumping to 2.6 percent and change. Uh, but nonetheless, we were just trading, folks, and the S&P at 41.29. We are 350 points above the lows that we had on March 15th. I keep bringing it up because, man, there is volatility in play, folks, and it is possible to the downside, to say the least. You got the NASDAQ 100 off 223 points. That's 1.5 percent. The Dow right now off about six tenths percent, 34,325. Uh, let's jump around to some of the news that we got this morning besides the Fed minutes out there. <coughs> Excuse me. JetBlue. So they're trying to take over Spirit. Be interesting to see how this plays out. Now, Spirit was looking to merge with Frontier. Not sure how this is going to play into that. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. JetBlue willing to shell out $3.6 billion for Spirit because it wants to take on bigger carriers. Uh, I imagine these airlines, JetBlue in particular, uh, they're looking at the potential for a ramped up demand in travel. Spirit and rival discount carrier Frontier announced the plans to combine in February. Um, and some saying, wait, what's going on? As they say, the bid, Spirit called unsolicited, cast doubt on the plan tie up with Frontier. So Spirit was surging more than 22% yesterday. Uh, down 3% this morning and jumping over to JetBlue shares. Folks, if I was in the industry... All right, they got good times coming up. All right, no matter what is going on with oil prices, people are going to want to travel. JetBlue traced down hard yesterday on that deal. They're going to be spending 3.6 billion potentially, an unsolicited bid to take over Spirit. Uh, you put this thing on a three-year weekly. You're pushing the low 13s. Might be a nice area for JetBlue, man. These are areas we cannot, we have not seen since October of 2020, and you back it up to 2021. We're right near the area that we've seen some of those lows there. Uh, for JetBlue, and I imagine, folks, travel, it is going to pick up in the future. We're not quite there yet. Uh, oil prices really putting in a hampering on some of the profit potentials, to say the least, of these airline companies. But if I was an executive of one of these companies, folks, they are going to be seeing higher demand for the foreseeable future as people come out of the pandemic and want to travel, especially domestically, um, international what's going on in Europe, with still what's going on with COVID, a little bit more difficult to navigate the variables in play here, but JetBlue, uh, I'd be looking at some of these. I talked about yesterday, Carnival was up yesterday nicely. They had the biggest week of cruise bookings ever from the end of March till April 3rd, but they sold off with the market yesterday as well. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming right back with our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures negative 38 points right now, trading at 44.82. You got the NASDAQ 100 right now off 1.5 percent. We'll call it off 216 points, 14,611. And we got the 10 year right now. You talk about some moves, folks. The 10 year down 16 ticks, 12014. We got the 10 year yield above 2.6 percent. We got Fed minutes coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks, talking about defined risk, talking options. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. These markets, you know, it wasn't long after I spoke to you yesterday morning that Lael Brainerd kind of dropped a bomb on the market with her hawkish comments. And that really has set the tone from then until we'll, we get some relief when we get the Fed minutes released at 2 o'clock Eastern today, Tommy. So these markets are jittery, and there's not much in the pipeline right now that's going to change them from being jittery, except I think if we get – remember, the expectations for the Fed meeting or for the Fed minutes that are going to release today is going to be volatile, Right. I mean, James Bullard dissented at a meeting where they raised rates. So people are worried about what's going to be released at 1 o'clock. Remember, these are notes, you know, minutes from a meeting several days ago. So it's not new news, but it's certainly a look behind the curtain of what the Fed was thinking. And the market, whether it should or not, Tommy, always reacts to it. Yeah, it'll be interesting, man. I got a chart of the 10-year up here on the Thinkorswim platform right now, Kevin. And if you back it up to, to, we'll call it like midnight Monday night, basically. It was about 11 p.m. Monday night, early, early Tuesday, late, late Monday. We had a 122 handle uh, on the 10-year. And just like that, by this morning, we're at 120.05, almost two full points to the downside. Um, and so as you say, I mean, boy, the drop-off really began quickly when she started talking yesterday. 
And I was talking about to kick off the program, Kevin, saying maybe that was, you know, the, the, the move in anticipation of the minutes. And maybe it's a it's a story where, like many others, you get the move ahead of the news. The news comes out. And it's kind of already known. And maybe she's she, she served that purpose of giving the market kind of a heads up of what's coming on those minutes. But I agree. Uncertainty out there until we get the minutes at 2 p.m. Um, but, boy, it's tough to see what's going to happen, as in a lot of uh, a lot changed in the last 24 hours, Kevin, already priced into this market. We'll see how they react at 2 p.m. for the minutes. We got a lot of other stuff going on in the market, Kev. We got, uh, of course, Twitter and the press out there. Elon's refiled as an activist investor. Good for him out there. Uh, really remarkable what he's done, Kevin, from almost a trading perspective, though. What do you think? So take like the, the whole agenda that he may have out of things. Um, what do you think of the price action that he was getting into Twitter, man? It, it came out. He was buying basically since the end of January. I mean, it looks like a great spot on the chart to me if you're a technician, man, to be buying Twitter down at the 30s, regardless of what was happening when it was as high as 80 last year. What do you think about that? Elon Musk is savvy in many different ways, right? And it's not just in his business acumen, but also as someone who is is got his finger on social media, he's got his finger on value and you know, it just shows you there's not much that this guy can't figure out. And so he had an interest in social media. He's always had an interest in social media. It's clear now that he's always had an interest in Twitter and how it works. He mentioned in a social media post that he may want to start his own, and he probably did a little due diligence and realized that Twitter was under some pressure here and relatively modestly valued. Well, he's given that a shot in the arm in terms of the value of this company. So, listen, it just in terms of a different view, an Elon Musk's different view of what Twitter can become and should be, I think, you know, this stock has a better future today than it did a few days ago, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, no matter what you think of the guy, you can't deny uh, a brilliant man, entrepreneur, changed the world in, in a couple different facets, which is just incredible, and, and on the way to becoming the richest man in the world by, by doing those things. Um, but yeah, Tommy, just as a... If I, if I could. Yes. Elon Musk is the biggest electric vehicle maker in the world, right? That's He's got 75% of the market share. Yet, even though... Most people talk their book on a daily basis. He's calling for more fossil fuel production because he knows that's what's right for, for the U.S. and the world economy. So even though he could easily be talking his book, he doesn't do it. So when someone does that and talks really against their own book, that is a person I feel I can trust, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, they're going to be writing a lot about Mr. Elon Musk and, and his quests uh, throughout the years. And just it's if you pull up the chart of Twitter, folks, I mean, you know, the story is out today, Kevin. He's basically buying shares on almost a daily basis since the end of January. You can't pick almost a better, you know, low on this chart, man. January 24th, Twitter was trading at 32 bucks. It makes a low of 31.30 on February 24th. It's down at 32.48 on March 14th. Um, just months of the ability to be down there. And now, of course, it's trading above 50 bucks. Um, and I agree, you know, no matter what you think about Twitter, man, um, monetarily wise, he's probably somebody you want on your team running your company or having an influence, man, with the influence he has. With that in mind, Kevin, we get off Twitter, man. We get back to the market. What are you guys talking about at Fast Market with everything going on today coming up at 12, Kev? We're going to cover two real good stocks, Microsoft, how it's reacting to this market sell-off in the first segment, Uber in the, in the last segment, and then when the market's are jittery like this, what else can you talk about? Booze. We'll talk about Constellation Brands with like Ooh, Folio I like in the middle segment of the, company, so, uh, of, of the show. So Microsoft, Constellation Brands, and Uber, Tommy. You know, I, I have a little Constellation in my retirement account, Kevin. I was taking a look at them. One of the few stocks that was actually positive yesterday, Constellation Brands, in the green yesterday with everything going on. Um, and Uber, we have some Uber in my newsletter. I saw some some news on them, right? They're going to be trying to be the app of everything, I guess. Haven't dug, in, dug into it, but I saw the headlines, um, whether it's planes, trains, automobiles, it seems. Well, Kevin... We appreciate the time, man, as always. It's an especially interesting market right now, so we'll be looking forward to the program at 12 Eastern time today, man. You have a great one. We'll be watching.
Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure, man. Take care. Folks, every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. I tell you, if you haven't checked out the program yet, please check it out. I've learned so much from the program myself. And it's times like this, folks, where you have markets moving with volatility. You have the VIX back above 22 right now. You have the 10-year yield spike in a 2.6%. We got Fed minutes out at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Uh, and I'm going to be watching when they go over Microsoft as well, because I have some Microsoft as well and a little bit of retirement action. And yeah, you got quite a pullback here on Microsoft, man. From 350, you make it down to lows of about 275. You're back to 310. Um, but we will see some of these growth stocks in particular back on a daily Boy, you talk about some sell offs, man. Yesterday, let's put it on a 15 minute to see the run. You talk about drops, man. Yesterday, you dropped from 315 down to 311. And this morning, folks, you got Microsoft. It's going to open down about six dollars. That's almost a two percent drop on the open. But guess what? We got the uh, Nasdaq 100 off about one point five percent. So not too surprising. As we come into the break, let's jump around to some of the fag stocks real quick. Amazon shares trading down. Uh, you're down to about 3240. So just trading at 3360 yesterday morning, folks. Uh, almost nothing immune. I'll take a look at some of them. I, I talked to Kevin. Constellation was one of them that had a good day yesterday. Walmart actually finished higher for the session yesterday as well. We'll take a look. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&P right now opening down about nine tenths percent. Your negative 41 points. NASDAQ 100 opens down about 1.5 percent, negative 216. Dow off 232. That's about two thirds percent in the red. And we got the Russell off about two thirds percent as well, trading at 2028. Jumping back to Twitter real quick. Uh, Twitter pulling back a bit. You're off 1.7 percent. You're sitting right at about 50 bucks. So taking a look at the article that came out. Uh, a little bit more revealed in terms of what Elon was doing. So he has 73 million shares and change, 9.1% of the company. At the close of trading, that's $3.73 billion. Uh, he spent 2.64, so over a billion dollars in profit over that time. Now, he has been buying. I'm trying to figure out where it was. Come on. Yeah. Yeah has been purchasing shares in his preferred social media company since January 31st and extending through April 1st. The largest purchase came on February 7th. Um, he can't own more than 14.9% of the stock. That was the deal he made to get a board seat. Now, here's what I'll say that I talked about it again. It is a real bummer that nobody even in the financial press, folks, is talking about the lack of regulations that he followed in this quest. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, he refiled, okay, um, as an activist investor, <coughs> okay, 13D filing confirming that now he has an active stake in it, okay? Now, he crossed the 5% threshold on March 14th, I believe. Let's pull this up exactly. Come on. All right. I got to get the dates exactly, but I believe he passed it on March 14th, which it normally gives you 10 days to file. Excuse me. He what? Yes, here it is. He crossed the 5% threshold on March 14th. Okay. You have 10 days to file with regulatory bodies that you've now amassed a 5% stake in the stock. He didn't do that, folks. He, I think he filed it like April 4th or something like that. So here's what I'll say. Musk's Musk is worth, what, $250, $300 billion, okay? He puts about 1% of his net worth into this purchase, okay? That is akin to somebody who is worth $1 million taking a $10,000 stock position in a company, okay? Pretty menial, doesn't really mean much, okay? If Musk doesn't have the resources to follow financial regulations, folks, then what is the average person supposed to do? So let's just say that Musk, if he had spent a million dollars on lawyers to make sure that he was following the regulations, I mean, with all the trouble he's gotten in, taking you know, Tesla private at 420, all this stuff, right? He, he lost the chairmanship of Tesla, okay? Over the fact that he couldn't control his tweets to align with acting as the CEO and chairman of a publicly traded company. They, they, he just wasn't doing it, folks. He was putting out material information that wasn't true on Twitter that was affecting the share price of the stock. So if he had spent $1 million on lawyers, which is way more than he probably would have needed to spend, but who knows, right? He's amassing a 10% stake. Now, that, and I'm just talking about spending it to make sure you're following the regulations, right? You say to your team of lawyers, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to amass almost a 10% stake in Twitter. I'm probably going to try and get a board seat. I'm going to push them to do different things. Uh, make sure that I'm following the regulations for that. If he had spent a million dollars on that, for part of his, let's just call it a $3 billion position for simple math, even though it was $2.64 billion. To tie it back to the person who's worth a million dollars again, that invests $10,000 in a stock, that would be akin to the person that spent $10,000 on a stock position spending $3.33 on a little bit of law advice to make sure they're following the regulations. Point being, it was basically nothing. He could have followed them, he chose not to, he does it continuously, he's the richest person in the world. Um, and yeah, it might not have had a huge impact on what's going on, but the regulations are there, folks, to protect retail traders. He had a huge position in Twitter at the same time that he was out on Twitter asking investors um, numerous different things about what Twitter should be done, et cetera. It's not how it should be, folks. OK, and nobody's talking about it, which makes no sense if the richest person in the world doesn't have to follow regulations that have to do with basically trying to inflict their ownership over a company and make changes. Then what is the point of them? I wish more people would be talking about it. Not many people even understand that he amassed that 
He should have filed it by March 24th. He should have filed it as an activist investor already. Instead, he files it as a 13G, which points to a passive stake. He files it 10 days late. It's just nonsense. And it makes, you know, it's just, he's just, it's not how things are supposed to be, folks. And unfortunately, uh, if the richest man in the world can do it, then somebody else is going to try and do it too. And the only people that are going to be hurt are the retail traders in the way. And that's the bottom line. All right, let's jump to Uber. They're going to be talking a little bit of Uber coming up on Fast Market. Uh, so they look to create a super app by adding planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, they announced Wednesday it's adding trains, buses, planes, and car rentals to its UK app this year. Now, it's interesting because they just added all the yellow taxis, right, in New York. They're trying to do that in other cities. Interesting to see how the business plan is shaping up at Uber. They're not going to provide these travel services itself, but it's going to allow users to book them through its app. Pretty similar to what they're doing with the yellow taxis in some of the bigger cities. Um, following software integrations with airlines, bus, and rail operators and car rental companies. <coughs> Excuse me. Uber hopes to become a one-stop shop for all your travel needs. Now, it's a tough one, folks, because, you know, you're going to be competing with what? Expedia, right, out there? Um, Travelocity, I'm not sure. There's a couple different companies. I think I've booked through Expedia before. Um, later this year, they plan to incorporate flights and in the future, hotels by integrating partners into the Uber app to create a seamless door-to-door -door travel experience. Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure that that is an area that they're going to be able to crush it in. Now, they're down dramatically with the market today. They're down 4.6%. All the growth stocks getting hammered right now. S&P's down 47. Um, but interesting to see how that shakes out. The business plan changing a little bit there. And as I say it, their CEO, what was he? Uh, what was he? He was, he was the head of what? Expedia. Yeah. So he ran Expedia. OK, he was the CEO of Expedia from August of 2005 to September of 2017. So there you go, folks. All right. He is in the know and he's probably figuring out that they have an opportunity. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But nonetheless, in the press, once again, let's see other headlines we got going on out here. Uh, Boeing. Yeah. Amazon, Microsoft and Google. The big three. They all get the cloud mega deal. Uh, they're going to do. Give developers new tools to test the aircraft. Boeing favors a shared deal instead of going all in on Amazon. Uh, they hire them all to help a digital makeover aimed at giving its airplane designers and software developers more tools. Multi-year agreement. It would make sense. I mean, if I was a big company like this and I had the ability to say, ah, I'll give you all my business, you know, you hedge your bets a little bit by going on there. Now, we'll take a look at Boeing shares. Amazon down with the market down 1.9% today. Boeing shares right now down 2.5%. Now here's what I'll say about Boeing. You're looking for some Boeing action? Keep this channel on your charts, folks. 171, maybe 172. It's only about six bucks below where we're trading at right now. That's an area that I would look at Boeing. Uh, we've gotten a couple bounces on the lower trend line for Boeing shares from there. Right now we're trading at 177.68. Let's jump back to JetBlue. Is there going after the airport? It's sleeping at 67% for next. Uh, we'll see. Let's look again. We'll see again. Carnival. Down 4.3% today. Carnival. That's up, up, up. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to be coming back talking some Forex, talking some crude oil with our man Teddy Kegstad. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps dropping a little bit on the open. We're negative by 49 points. That's 1.08%. The red right now trading at 44.70. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about. There's some great trends going on in the currency markets. All right, man. Where do we want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, why don't we start with Europe and we'll work our way around the world and I'm going to explain how you can trade the divergence that's going on with the major crosses right now and actually ride these trends. So um, we'll start with Europe and uh, Euro US dollar. I'm along it. I see there's nothing but weakness going on with the EU. The same with the US dollar Swiss. I'm along that because the Swiss also is going to be under pressure. I don't see that ending for any time soon, especially what's going on with the interest rate environment. We have the Treasury bonds that in the past four weeks have dropped 15 handles, making newer move lows today. So U.S. dollar strength is definitely hurting those currencies really, really bad, especially because of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. The pound U.S. dollar, however, that's the divergence. I'm along that one because between oil and the interest rate thing, it's not as um, heavy on that one. Plus, it, 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 because of Brexit, remember we talked about that for two years, and if anyone wanted to know what the implications of that would be, now you can see their sovereignty, how that's actually helping them. It's holding up their currency, it's helping their economy, and they're not taking the blunt of this, of everything that's going on with the Ukraine and Russia, okay? So in, in the dollar index, that's why you have a lot of it right now. It looks like it's kind of basing. You know, you have this flirting with resistance, flirting with support. That's because the euro is the biggest component. That's what's drag. That's the, where the strength is coming in in the dollar index. But then you have the pound that actually is kind of going is going the other way, obviously. So that's restricting the dollar index for, from upward movement. OK. And now we're going to bounce around to Asia and see how this is why the dollar index is becoming really hard to use as an indicator. And you really have to watch the trends of what these individual currency crosses are doing instead. OK, so U.S. dollar yen, we know we've been talking about that for a long time. I know you guys love it because of how it impacts gold. Um, that is still a bull. We talked last week about how the Bank of Japan has a 130 price target to support their currency. Um, we had a buy signal going on there a couple days back. I'm long the currency again, looking for <clears throat> new move highs. 
Now, this is where you can really play the divergence in the markets. So in the Asian zone, the Australian dollar is a bull. That market had bottomed out a few months ago because of the rising commodity prices and demand for them. It's really strengthening their currency. The interest rate factor is just slowing the rally for the Australian dollar. So now the great play now is the Aussie yen because the Aussie is strong versus the dollar and it's in a bull trend. The U.S. dollar yen is in a bearish trend, so that makes Aussie yen a bull, and it's flirting with new highs. I think you're, until the yen hits U.S. dollar 130 mark, you're going to see that trend continue. It's a great rally to, um, to chase into and look, and look for newer move highs. I think that the velocity of that move is also going to give you a lot of um, reward compared to your risk, especially if you're risking the last swing lows. And the same is for the pound yen also, because since the pound is, is at least relatively stable versus the dollar and not a bear, and the, and the GN is collapsing versus the dollar, the pound yen trade is also a really good bull. So that's my little walk around the currencies, and now I'll give you the question now. <laughs> No, that's great, man. I was just letting you roll with it. And it, it is pretty amazing. Um, and it makes sense. You lay it out when you got strength on one, you got weakness on another, you pair those. And of course, it's going to accelerate things. Um, when you're looking at these pairings, Teddy, for people not familiar with Forex, because I'm not familiar, you know, I really don't trade too much Forex really at all. Uh, but of course, it's important for how our markets trade. But when you're trading these, um, are you constantly looking for these types of setups where you're, you're, you're trying to find maybe the weakest uh, versus the strongest? Um, you know, as in, are you trying to look at like a pound yen or a pound um, or an Aussie yen versus kind of we're so used to it and you make the mm -hmm. great points so, you know tell me what the dollar index is doing right but it goes so much deeper than that are you trading the euro dollar you're trading the pound dollar but as a forex trader do you focus on these types of pairings trying to find the weakest and, and the strongest it would make sense but it, i don't want to mm -hmm. say they're are they as liquid because i know the forex market's amazingly liquid um but what do you go through when you look at something as trading like the euro dollar which is just you know one of the marquee pairings out there mm -hmm. versus something like a, a, a aussie yen or something like that Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. And you know what? The answer is really simple. It is exactly that. I do look for the trends in the other crosses because that helps no matter what. I, you've heard me say it before that the best indicator of the market is the markets themselves because that's in real time. So just like how I, I laid out those trades for the yen trade, you know, with the dollar versus the pound and also the Aussie. Because yes. of those trends, that's how I put myself in those other crosses. It's a triangle. So you know that where when you have one broad-based trend that you can count on, like we know that the U.S. dollar yen is obviously in a bull market. <laughs> higher sure. move highs, higher move lows. It's been going that way for months, you know. Yeah. So and then you know now also that, for instance, like the Australian dollar, that bottom versus the dollar already months ago. So that yeah. was a bear, and no matter what, you can't say it's a bear anymore. It's because it's sure. been a bull for months. So riding those, once you have that at least intermediate and short-term trends that are confirmed, higher move highs, higher move lows, then you look for, and that's why I said we had spy signals in those currencies. So for instance, last Friday and last Thursday, you had a buy signal in the US dollar yen. So that means we're looking to go back up and check challenge resistance. We also had a buy signal in the Australian dollar so that means that's going stronger versus the dollar. So that means it would overtake the yen, you know? So it gives you, um, and then also in those crosses, you had a buy signal simultaneously. So when all three of those have signals that go off, then it's, that's, that's like the golden moment where you're like, okay, the big money has all turned when it comes to that, that quadrant. Because remember, there's other crosses, like there's Euro Swiss, there's Euro Yen, there's Euro Pound, and all these other ones have the same differences as well. So where you might see a consolidation, say in the US dollar sector in one of them, and only trending in the other, those other ones will be trending, you know? So there's sure. always some, there's always a move somewhere. There's always a bull market somewhere. There's always a bear market somewhere, you know? So that is exactly how I do look for those trades, you know, at least to get me in the frame of mind of, am I looking to be a buyer or a seller? Which is the right side of the market to be on? No, it makes sense, because you basically got two sides of the equation in terms of a pairing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, why not have both trends on your side in sure. that pairing? Uh, back to the dollar yen real quick, Teddy, because I know okay. we got a bunch of traders out there. You gave us some great insight insight last week talking about the Bank of Japan. You referenced it again, mm -hmm. saying they're kind of drawing the line in the sand. So you're a bull. We got it at 123.86. Where do you start to get a little hesitant if you are looking for an upward move since you have the Bank of Japan over there talking about maybe mm -hmm. capping that at 130? I would say that if you're riding the long, um, you don't want to try and pick a top. That's for sure. Never try and pick a top or a bottom. 
I'm looking to start taking profits around 127 half to 128 half and then cool. see if it can get to 130. But I'm laying off the position because I don't see it accelerating. If it goes above 130, I see it being a radical spike where if you don't get out right away, you're going to be all of a sudden wondering, oh, now I got stopped out and I sure. could have made, you know, at least a couple of dollars off of it. You know, sure. And we got 30 mm -hmm. seconds, Teddy. We got crude trading at 101.23. Uh, what's your take on crude? Where we go? I think we're going to be chopping around between 100 and 115 for the next couple of weeks. Sounds good, man. I don't Teddy, think we're we appreciate move yet. That's a, a great insights, man. I appreciate you Thanks. walking us around all those pairings. I know the listeners appreciate it as well. And uh, boy, everything every week, Teddy, we got a whole new market by the time <laughs> I talk to you. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Take care, Tommy. Have a great you day. You too, Teddy. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 52 points. That's 1.14% in the red right now. You're talking about a NASDAQ 100, negative more than 2%, 14,522. The two numbers I'm going to spit out at you, uh, well, we'll put it back on the S&P. Number I'm looking at, the 382 from this entire run up, folks, 44 35 in the S&P. We're about 30 points away from there. Remember, 2 p.m. Eastern time today, we get those Fed minutes. Be interesting to see how the market trades into them and then how it trades out of them at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, what else we got going on? 
One week from today, folks, <clears throat> Basil Chapman's coming up next, and he is going to be doing a subscriber webinar for opening call subscribers. Now, here's what I'll say. Opening call subscribers, uh, you, of course, can attend this for free. It is going to be in Discord. We encourage you to join Discord if you haven't already. All newsletter subscribers at TFNN gain free access to the Tiger's Den now, so you can join Discord. And, folks, if you have not tried out Basil's newsletter yet, it's a great time to do it. Excuse me. You sign up for his newsletter, you get 30 days of the opening call, you gain access to the webinar he's doing a week from today, April 13th, 90 minutes from 4 till 5.30. That webinar will be archived, so if you can't attend live, you can view it on your members page at TFNN. You also gain access to a bunch of archive webinars Basil has done in the past. You get that all for 30 days, folks. All new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you got nothing to risk. Just check out the opening call. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the first webinar that we're doing in Discord as well, and it's just so easy, man. You can attend that on your tablet. You can attend it on your phone. You can be sitting there uh, hanging out on the porch uh, at 4 o'clock after a trading day, watching that on your tablet, whatever it is. The technology is pretty cool. We're excited about it, and Basil kicks, out, uh, kicks it off a week from today. All right. It's going to be an interesting one, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil coming up next. We got the markets in negative territory. Quite a pullback from yesterday. You had yesterday, folks. Uh, S&P's 4588, just like that, 120 points. We give up 4468. And we're going to get the announcement with the minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We'll see if they line up with what was talked about yesterday in terms of that balance sheet roll off. Thanks for joining me, folks. Thanks for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Larry will be doing his program live at 11 o'clock this morning. Fast market at 12. Remember, they're talking Microsoft. They're talking a little bit of Uber on there as well. Steve Rhodes at 1. Dave White at 2. My dad, Tom O'Brien, wraps it up live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned for Basil. Peace.